this Nerd Gen Report, where we're going to be discussing mostly the Marvel news that we've gotten. Um, and there's been quite, some quite interesting ones. First up, Marvel Studios makes history with 28 Emmy nominations for WandaVision and The Falcon and Winter Soldier. 28 Emmys, man. Do you think those 28, do you think those are, I'm not going to say deserving, but do you think that they, they need that many? Well, there's one that's clearly not, <laughs> which we'll talk about. But no, I mean, I think I think what it underscores, and you know, and I'll put the Mandalorian alongside this because it's second nominated, second straight year for um, mm -hmm. an Emmy and it's category as well that these shows are prestige television i mean we can safely say you know for next year's emmys hiddleston owen wilson uh, sofia di martino in the category of the, the random one we're going to talk about jonathan majors better be winning that next year um obviously going to be nominated along with michael waldron kate heron yeah. and the show itself like yeah. it's a lock yeah I'm not surprised. I mean, they they didn't make the they didn't make these shows to be what Agents of Shield was on yeah, ABC, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, or what the CW universe was, you know, in DC. This was made to be prestige television with movie budgets, big name actors, quality directors and writers, and they're being rewarded for that. And the only thing that's going to do to our Jodie Foster discussion the other day, it's going to make more of those talks happen. <laughs> Definitely, because now it's like you got to be in one of these if you want to have a shot at probably getting one of these awards. Mm -hmm. Um, good for them. I know Kevin ha wanted when he set out to do this, he wanted to get that recognition. Um, obviously, he wanted to get that recognition for Black Panther, and now because he's moving into TV, he also wants to get that recognition there too by doing quality stuff. But there's one nomination that just doesn't make sense especially when you talk about other performers <laughs> that you're like in the same show in the same show more scenes and was way more impactful so 98 seconds in or 90, he was on screen for 98 seconds. This is a number that I keep throwing out. 98 seconds, that's why I remember it. And he gets an Emmy nomination for 98 seconds on film. Mr. Don Cheadle, not, listen, Don Cheadle is a, a, a vet. He's been in a, a lot of films, Devil in Blue Dress. Uh, Talk to me, I don't know if you've ever seen Talk to me. I have not. I've seen Watch Devil in Blue Dress, I've not seen. Watch Talk to Me. I'm, trust me when I say this. Watch Talk to Me. You, you're going to love it. Uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Ocean's Eleven. He's been in a lot of stuff. He's a great actor. But you're going to tell me that Carl Lumley doesn't deserve that nomination? It's like, did you watch the show? When you, who was in the room when you decided to, to, to hand out these nominations? Did they see this show? Did they see the performance of Carl Lumley? It just doesn't make sense. And I'm not hating Don Cheadle. Oh, well, he, he's just <laughs> as perplexed as the rest yeah. of us. He didn't ask to be nominated, okay? There's nothing to do with Don Cheadle. They nominated him. Exactly. And he reacted with as much surprise as all of us. Yeah. But, you know, the most memorable parts of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was Carl Lumley's performance to me. And for him not to get a nomination is, it just doesn't seem right. What were your thoughts on that? Did you think about well, Carl, did you think about Carl Lumley when you, when you saw that? Well, of course, but basically, I, I mean, on, on one level, I found this incredibly ironic and comical because Isaiah Bradley got Isaiah Bradley. That's basically what happened. <laughs> I mean, Anthony Mackie, man, now they'll never forget you. Well, <laughs> unless it's the Emmy commission, the voters, they definitely forgot about you. 
Where the statue going? of the Smithsonian, not good enough, apparently, to get you a nomination. Where yeah, this going? is absolute highway robbery, okay? I mean, this is, you know, and again, it didn't, Don Cheadle has nothing to do with it. It wasn't his decision. But it is an absolute <laughs> disgrace that Carl, if you're going to make this, it's effectively a best cameo award. That's what the award is. I, I, if you're going to make a best cameo award, and his part was, I mean, what are they going to say? Definitely, it's more than a cameo, so he was ineligible? Like, <laughs> But if that's the case, why are we giving awards for like 90 seconds of screen time? Any, like, That's a weird category to create. Like, We don't yeah. give awards for stunt people who do a lot of work <laughs> at any given show, but we're going to give awards for 90 seconds? It doesn't make Words. any sense to me what's Words. going on here. So, But yeah, the irony right. and the meta of like what that character was and his issue in the show coming home to roost in this sequence was just too much for me to get past so i I feel bad for him hopefully there's a season two and he can kind of get that now i will say one other thing on the emmy point i don't necessarily think the marvel folks are favorites in a lot of these categories Mm -hmm. it would not it would actually surprise me if they convert a lot of the 28 i think they'll do well in the visual effects and the editing that's probably an area where they spend a lot of money and they'll win a decent amount I don't necessarily think that like Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, um, I don't think they're necessarily going to be the favorites. Ka- even Catherine Hahn, probably not the favorites in their categories. I think the Loki cast is going to have a better chance at actually winning next year. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Just my personal opinion. Like, if you've seen like no, Kate definitely. Winslet and Mayor of Easttown is up against Elizabeth Olsen, I think Kate Winslet probably a better performance yeah, head to head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just. Yeah, but, but yeah, nominations but, are where to that you got to start somewhere, and that's a big start. Yeah, so. yeah. But when that year comes up where Loki's up, people are gonna be raising hell if if Ty Hedison is not nominated and that show is not nominated because that show was was you know was everything to me and, and thus far in terms of what they released. That that show Loki was just fantastic. Well, there's gonna come a time where there's gonna be Marvel characters head to head in yeah. these categories that's also going to be interesting that's going yeah. to happen with the amount of shows we're getting so yeah, true there's something to watch out for yeah yeah um yeah let us know what you guys think about um uh, mr don Cheadle. um and it reminds me when i read this is like reminded me of kevin garnett's uh quote anything's possible yeah <laughs> anything's possible um next up and this is a very interesting, uh, as I was reading it, I was very like, I like what I see in terms of what Marvel and the, 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 the lengths that they go to finding the right person. Um, Tariq and talks to direct Marvel's blade after several months of searching, this comes to us from dark horizons. Marvel studios is reportedly in negotiations with filmmaker Bassam Tariq. Um, to direct the new Blade movie starring Mahershala Ali as a titular vampire hunter, Day Walker. Um, Feige, uh, Feige Ali and execs reportedly met with dozens of candidates going all the way back to last fall. Those that made the final cut met and delivered their final presentations in the last few months with Tariq's vision ultimately winning the parties over. Do you, do you hear in terms of the length of time it took to find the right person, because I think they understand what's at stake here. There, obviously, you know, there's no competition in regards to Blade and Wesley Snipes' Blade, but people are gonna look at it that way somewhat. They're gonna be comparing it. This movie has to succeed. It has to exceed. Um, Wesley Snipes' Blade in order for people to really accept it. Um, what were your thoughts, Brian, on this uh, news? Look, I mean, there's been a couple references, explicit references to vampires in the Marvel TV shows, right? So that we that's also Loki. planting the seeds for Blade and his existence and the world of Blade. Um, you know, it, but it, it goes to our prior, prior discussions of Marvel versus DC and process. And so when I hear this, what it kind of tells you is Marvel has a zip code of where they want Blade to be. And then kind of within that, they want to hear 
visions for how to execute, how to bring that to life. That's the balance of editing versus creative freedom versus, you know, Disney makes a call to a filmmaker and says, Hey, you want to do blade? And then kind of gets out of the way. Right. Which yeah. is, that's, that's, that's the other way. That's to say like, Hey, I'm just going to hand it off to you. It's all you. And you come back to me when you're done yeah. here. They clearly have a, a sense of how they want blade to ultimately fit into the MCU. But there's a, there's flexibility to that. Yeah. And so clearly whatever got, this sounds like it was a pretty competitive pitch. It actually sounds like it might've taken longer than, um, some of the other ones we've heard, like I think we've heard with like Eternals, I don't think there were dozens of people up against Chloe Zhao, yeah. um, you know, when she kind of blew them away with with uh, with with her version of that. So this one sounds like it took a while to find that that marriage, but you know, we're finally getting some movement here. And like I said, it's been notable to hear vampires mentioned in mm-hmm. these shows. Mm-hmm. You know, we have not heard the word mutant yet, but we have heard vampires twice. And it's interesting to to. To understand this, originally Chloe Zhao was supposed to be doing Black Widow. I forget what happened there, but Marvel, you know, they treat this, you know, as a business, and they go through the interviewing process. Obviously, there's going to be these one-offs where you're blown away by the person's vision and 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 his prior work and you want to bring it home board because you found the right movie for them to do but this is you know marvel thinking about who they want to put in charge of of, of a film right so it's like again marvel's not always going to win it's going to hit a home run but they at least they have a process that for the most part the majority of the stuff that they're going to put out is going to be a a, enjoyable. And then there's going to be those that are going to be home runs. And that's all you can ask for, you know? So uh, listen, man, Marvel, Marvel is a beast in terms of how they do things. Um, Speaking of which Marvel plans more animation. I don't recall what the article stated regarding this, Brian. Could you fill me in on, on what was stated regarding the Marvel animations? I know they're there. Um... Well, there's a couple a couple of points in the story, um, and they were talking about the head of the division. Uh, in, in, in with What If, obviously, is the next show that's coming. That is an animated show. It has a style of animation that is a little different than we've seen. And I think you and I would agree this is one area where DC has really oh yeah blown Marvel away for oh, yeah. the last twenty oh, plus yeah. years. I mean, it's not even not even close. As big as the gap is on the cinematic side in favor of the MCU, that's as the big opposite. as the gap has been on the anime side. So I think this is a little bit of a recognition of like, hey, we we need to up our game with regard to, you know, whether it's X Men, you know, cartoon or you know, Avengers cartoons or individual character animation, like or a more adult theme animation. I think what they're trying to say is, yeah, like this is kind of should be disney's bread and butter right they've done this away from the marvel brand many times over and i think they're trying to find like hey we need to really put a lot of they're putting a lot of money that's what it sounds like a lot of money dedicated division dedicated personnel within the marvel house that's doing nothing but what if and sort of other animated projects so it sounds like we're going to be getting in some ways, like we ranked What If alongside the other live action shows, but in some yeah. ways, it sounds like we should have just moved What If as like the pole position of the new category they're going to create um, as an animated division and compare it to whatever is coming after them. It sounds like we're getting a lot there. It sounds like we're also getting a lot in terms of um, increased diversity kind of within that as well. Um, so again, you know, we're seeing that in the TV shows and it sounds like we're going to see that in the animated side, but then they also dropped in there some of the release dates for the live action shows. And that was the other thing that to get your reaction to is I didn't know that we were getting like Hawkeye, Miss Marvel. Um, I'm even missing one. There's at least like three more that are coming before the end of this year. Hawkeye, uh, Miss Marvel. She-Hulk. Might even be She-Hulk. She-Hulk. I think they're yeah, all supposed to be out before de- before really? December 31st, which is seems ridiculously fast yeah. to me. I mean, if there's anything to say about what the first three 
shows that they've put out. Um, you know, they've done a fantastic job in delivering um, those shows. They haven't all like landed the plane, but um, we have our doubts of She-Hulk and I think you were high on Ms. Marvel. Yeah, that's my number two. Yeah. Um, and Hawkeye, depending on the story that they tell, um, so far is looking pretty interesting based on well, the Florence events Pugh of Black gave Warrior. that yeah. a lift. Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. she, Hawkeye just got a lift from that. Yeah. So it's funny to me how with this animation thing that they have going on is like what stories are they going to tell what characters are they going to tell how is it connected to the mcu is it connected to the mcu is it the multiverse of animation shows of the the the, 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 the timelines um that they're gonna be telling in these shows and these animated films is gonna be very interesting to see um, i assume how, what if will this. clue us in don't you think i feel like what if will clue us into at least one or two more shows that will come out of that show yeah yeah it's going to be very interesting man if what if is because there's a lot of people excited about the what if um show when it comes out in a few weeks so everybody's very look much looking forward to to this um animation show and what stories is going to tell and i think you had this as your number one yeah, it did yeah. um you know, and I can agree with the, the the sentiment because you know you can do this forever, right? Um, as long as you're doing Marvel films, every 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 year you have another set of orders based on what you've done in, in in that prior year or whatever. So let's see, man. This is this is definitely you know content, 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 um, and they're definitely pouring um their hearts out to to what they can do what else they can do so i mean if this is true so then you're looking at a fourth quarter kind of november december time period we're gonna have eternals no way home on the big screen and then you could potentially have because that's, right. that's december november december yeah and then you could potentially have three marvel shows plus book of fett on disney plus in the same time period <sighs> It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I was supposed to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I can do a show every day. I can do a show every day. Um, let us know what you guys think about this Marvel animation. And do you agree that uh, DC has truly true? It's the polar opposite of what they yeah. do in the live action versus the animation. Um, let us know in the comment section below. Next up, Michelle Yao talks her Shang-Chi role. The only thing that caught my attention about this article, Brian, was this city that she's protecting or she's a mm -hmm. part of or whatever the case may be. Most people are assuming that this is Kung Lung, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Obviously, we've got our taste of Iron Fist and, and, and on the Netflix, uh, Netflix uh, that platform. That never happened. That's yeah. That's the, the, it's like it's almost forgotten. It's almost like a bad dream. Um, and and I'm sure already Marvel knows what they don't want to do. <laughs> so we're definitely gonna get a tease, and that's gonna be an exciting tease once we hear that word or that name of that city, and possibly hints or images of of Iron Fist not possible but you know when he'll he'll be arriving into the mcu listen i wouldn't put it past them putting iron fist in shang chi just for a cameo who knows who knows what are your thoughts on this yeah i doubt the comment was made by accident michelle yo's a veteran of the process she's you know legendary sort of actress coming out of asia i doubt she would have said sort of that idea of I'm I'm the defender or protector of a citadel without either permission from Marvel or you know knowing kind of at least half knowing what what that would do to the to the fan base so yeah. I doubt that was an accident mm -hmm. and it would make a lot of sense I mean it would be, I mean as you know as we said like when you look at these TV shows 
and we have fun dissecting the Easter eggs and stuff like that. In some ways, the most fun thing is just walking through the world in, and you can just see where they're just like putting these pieces on the board, like the princess bar and just yeah. kind of saying like, oh, there it is. You know, they don't even have to say anything. I don't have to do anything with it. Mm, here it is. You know, <laughs> so if that's what she's protecting, it's not like we have to even spend any real time there or yeah. talk about its origin or talk about anything. All they got to do is just mention it or that's make it. it look comics accurate, and everyone's going to know what it is. Yeah. And you just say, okay, you know, we're, we're is, starting down the path. The that is the beauty. That is the beauty of the world that Marvel gets to play with and 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 entertain those i guess those um that wonder that we have about where this may possibly go where this lead is leading to what this means and all this other stuff because it, it, eventually we get to see those things right like you said these things aren't put there you know just to be put there they're put there on purpose so that we can i guess start building those juices towards that inevitability of seeing this character on screen. So let's see what this, I'm, this gives me a little bit more excitement than I've had in the past uh, for Shang-Chi. In the beginning when it was announced, I was super excited. After seeing the trailers, I'm not so super excited, but yet excited enough to go to the theaters to go see this. And this possible tease uh, makes me more excited because I'd I'd be happy just to hear the word Kung Lung in the film and I'll be like I'm good <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> um, let us know in the comment section below who you think is Kung Lung that they're talking about most likely. Most likely. Uh, next up, Black Widow actor playing an MCU mutant, Ursa Major. He was a guy that um, in the film was arm wrestling David Harbour's uh, Captain, no, what's it? No, what was his Red name? Guardian. Red, Red Guardian. Guardian, yeah. So he's supposed to be a mutant, Ursa Major. I'm not entirely so amped up for it, meaning if he is a mutant, it's it's cool, but it, it wasn't. It didn't give me that like old oh, snap is a mutant. It's not. It's not like to me. If I see like a mutant that I'm really familiar with, like just the X Men or the word mutant. If he were to say mutant, if, there's certain things that if you say, it'll get people excited. People are not excited for Ursa Major, even though he may be playing Ursa Major and he may be a mutant, but it's yet still not exciting because I don't think. We're getting to see that anytime soon um, within the next year or so. What are your thoughts on on that um, um, possibility that he was a mutant? Because who, who know who knows if he was a mutant or not, right? Yeah, this one felt a little bit more like the actor was speaking out of turn a little bit. Um, maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. As I said, you know, they. I don't think it's an accident that Marvel's been very careful not to use that word. Whereas they have said vampire yeah. and they have said, you know, they have put, you know, whether it's chaos magic, like they put terms out there very specifically. So to you know, timekeepers, what have you. So to not say mutant to me means they're holding it back. Yeah. But as we said, princess bar, this, maybe it's this guy, same idea. They're just showing you things that obviously they exist in the world and eventually mm -hmm. they'll fill in the blanks. So mm -hmm. and I'm not saying he's lying. I just, don't feel like it's a strand that goes anywhere. Yeah, yeah. In yeah, the yeah, immediate yeah. term. Yeah. So yeah. next up in a very exciting this this is a rumor. This is not necessarily confirmation of anything regarding Henry Cavill. But today there's been a lot of articles and, and, and uh, tweets and Instagram posts about Henry Cavill meeting with Marvel over at London at their at their uh, studio, and this is a case possibly of enough is enough with regards to the possibilities of him playing Superman in DC world, and he's 
because from what I've read, he deliberately wanted to speak to people face to face over at Marvel. He wants to talk to people. This is not this is not him being a fan and wants to shake hands with Kevin Feige or visit the MCU studios just because he's a fan. This is no what you guys got for me. That's what this is. What are your thoughts, Hen uh, Henry? <laughs> what are your thoughts, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think this. I think this is was kind of inevitable. I mean, I think you know he's he's an interesting case. Like, I, I don't necessarily think we have seen his best work yet. He's very good at being famous. Like, he has a very big social media following. He's seemingly very camera friendly whether it's on talk shows or whether it's in interviews without really telling you that much like he doesn't yeah. so he kind of plays that game pretty well and he has the witcher which is obviously is one of netflix most successful series so he has that to his name but at the same time like i think from a feature film perspective he hasn't really delivered film, the yes. mega performance yet you know that no. he's kind of been like couple levels away from the bullseye you yeah, know i yeah, include yeah. man of steel in that like that was a, a launch pad for his career no question but it wasn't a bullseye i liked it better than you did not a bullseye you know man yeah. from uncle is probably underrated yes not a bullseye and so he's had a number of these fill up i mean the closest he's probably gotten was like mission impossible fallout but he's very much third or fourth build in that yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. the main character so i think we're still waiting for henry cavill Top line movie star, awesome. Oh, and I forgot Enola Holmes, supporting character to Millie Bobby Brown, very good Netflix movie. We're still waiting for either Henry Cavill Oscar caliber performance or Henry Cal Cal Cavill, you know, Harrison Ford level type stardom performance. He's going to be very busy. He, I think he's, he's done with Richard, but I know he just got the gig for Highlander. Um, that doesn't feel like a bullseye to me either. Yeah, to me. I mean, this Highlander definitely has its fans, but to me, it feels like a Blade Runner sort of situation. It's like, you're going to have their fans, but other people are not going to probably, they'll probably go see it for him, but they, this, this is not going to be a franchise sort of thing. No, I mean, that movie was a cult hit. It wasn't a huge mainstream hit. Yeah. And like, honestly, like that, that remake has been kicking around for over a decade at this point. Yeah, so he's going to be busy. Um, but again, he went there deliberately to talk to people face to face. And I think see what the possibilities are. And I know they've mentioned or there's been rumors that they've wanted to do a Captain Britain and okay, you shake your head. You think that's not a bullseye either? A Marvel? Yeah, you know, I that almost seems. I don't know that I buy that. Mm -hmm. uh, it almost feels like people are almost like memeing or reverse engineering a role for Cavill because he's British that he can yeah, sort of yeah, obviously yeah. play because he's played Superman. Mm -hmm. I would rather see him in the X-verse. That's my, I'll just throw that out there. I don't know exactly what character, but I would rather see him in that because I feel like he's, he is very good as sort of a brooding uh, kind of gray area type of guy. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what he would want him to play. I'm not saying he should play Wolverine or anything like that. I'm just saying, I like, I just, no, I didn't mean that. I just meant yeah, like, yeah. but that motif, that style, like maybe, I don't know, Cyclops. I, I don't know where he would fit, but like, I kind of almost would rather see him try that kind of superhero as opposed to like Captain Britain just feels too much like British Superman to me. True, 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 true. Yeah, I hope it's not Wolverine because I know his name has been thrown in that arena. Um, Side Cops wouldn't be a bad um, choice, although I have my cast for those um, Pablo Shriver. As 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 possibly Cyclops. Um, also, that dude from This Is Us, the actor that plays that he's he plays an actor in the film in the in the show. Oh yeah, well well Justin Hartley, who was Green, you, that's who you're talking about. Who was Green Arrow, or he was Green Arrow on Smallville. He was okay. CW Aquaman in a pilot of a series that was never picked up. 
That's who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think he would probably be a good Cyclops as well. But I hope it, for me, again, Wolverine, Zach McGowan is is the guy. I don't know if you've looked him up. Did you, have you looked him up? I've looked him up. Yeah, I've looked okay. him up. Yeah, yeah. He's perfect for the role. He's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, but yeah, let's see what is this, this um, trip to Marvel Studios in London, uh, what it uh, spits out. Um, who knows what kind of conversations were had uh, and where this ends up. Uh, a lot of possibilities, but let's see. Silver Surfer, maybe? Who knows? Well, I was going to say, I mean, so if we're, if we're just spitballing ideas, I'll throw a few out here. What about Henry Cavill as a villain? Why does he have to be a hero? True. He wasn't a bad villain in Mission Impossible. Like, he kind of played both sides in that movie. He does have a mean streak. The Witcher, he's not really... He's sort of an anti-hero in that series. Doom? I'm just throwing out, like, what about Henry Cavill as villain? Because if you're trying to raise your profile and go... I mean, Marvel's trying to obviously do some work on the villain side. Like, you know, maybe he fits there. Maybe we're looking at the wrong side of the equation. Possibly Doom. Who knows? Possibly. One other one just floating with sort of... Maybe it's too obvious given his physique, but... Hulk? Which nah, because to me, Banner is... Not... You know, because Banner for me has always been puny Banner. You know? I was going to say, he's too, he's, too, he's too much the Hulk when he's not the Hulk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's too diesel. That's not yeah. a puny Banner. That's a diesel Banner. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay. But, um, yeah, the, the possibilities, man. Let's see where this comes. Um, let's see what happens um, with this meeting, that, that impromptu meeting that um, he had with Marvel. Um, it's very exciting for a lot of Marvel fans, a lot of Henry Cavill fans. I'm pretty sure we're going to start hearing that because this just came out today. Uh, so I'm pretty sure people are going to be picking this up and, and trying to sort of think about where he may fit in the MCU. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for today. A lot of stuff to cover. Um... Brian, any last words? No, I mean, news fast and furious. And, uh, you know, we're a couple of weeks away from what if, and then we get to what if, and then we're a couple of weeks away from Shang-Chi and we got Suicide Squad on top of that. So, yeah. you know, it's a lot of stuff. Keep, keep, it, keep it rolling. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah, man, DC definitely made his headlines. A lot of upcoming stuff that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing with uh, the Batman. Um, I'll definitely check out Suicide Squad. I'm happy for Zack Snyder and and what he is going to be creating over at Netflix. Um, there's just a lot of good things to look forward to, man. With Netflix, with Disney, um, Amazon, everybody's working to, to be on top and compete and stay on, on people's minds when they decide what they want to watch. Um, so it's very exciting times, very exciting times. And we've talked about this again a long time ago about the amount of content that we're going to be getting. And, it, it, you know, it's come to pass almost, right? We're hearing right. the announcements. So if you want to know what the future is, stay tuned to us. Nerd Gen <laughs> Report. We'll see you next time. And Carl Lumbly, we didn't forget you. You got our Emmy. Word up. Word up. We, we got to do a show. <laughs> our Emmys. <laughs> we definitely got to do one. We got to pick that one up, man. We got to cook that one up. All right. Have a good, uh, good night, and we'll see you next time.